was nice. And then my daughter moved me. So we are live. We are live. We are live. Hey guys, I hope everybody can see us and uh, I hope you're having an amazing, amazing day. I want to just make sure I've got myself here and I've got my amazing friend and partner Renee Deal. We, she handles all of our payroll for our clients. Um, thank God. Uh, it is one of the hardest things for me to do is payroll. And I want to make sure that I'm actually on. It is Saturday morning. Yes. And maybe. Yes. Okay. So we got people here. Okay. Yes. Hey, how are y'all? Happy Saturday. So I know we had some technical difficulties earlier and we are going to get started really quickly. Again, my name is Courtney Epps. I think everybody knows me. This is my amazing friend, platinum partner, sister with Tony Robbins, Renee Deal. She owns a company called Payday Payroll. Um, and she has been uh, lucky enough, uh, maybe not lucky enough to take over our clients and help us with payroll. So I'm so grateful for her. I know my life is better. And she is just an amazing, amazing soul. I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about herself and what she does. And then uh, so I can share this with some people. So please share, um, like and share this with as many people as possible. We're going to try to give you as much information today that we know so far about the New Cares Act and the Stimulus Act. So take it away, Renee. Hello, everyone. I'm Renee Deal. I'm the owner of Payday Payroll Resources. We are a local company in New Jersey. Um, we started the business 10 years ago. We have about 2,000 clients. And Court and I have um, you know, started to work together over the past few months, and it's been great. So we have tried to get as much information to share with you about the new stimulus package. And you know, we're, we're here to help. So whoever your payroll provider is, we are more than welcome to give you any information that we have to make this, you know, an, e an easy, an easier time, I should say for you. Yes. So, so I'm, yes. I'm excited to, you know, it's my first live. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. We had some major crazy technical difficulties. <laughs> so um, we're going to get started and I want to just uh, share, everybody knows, I'll just tell you a little bit about me. Let me bring both of us, I think now you can all uh, see our our screens together. My company's outside the box business solutions. I go by OTB Tax. Uh, Renee is Payday Payroll. We work hand in hand together to maximize our clients and make sure they're getting the best benefit possible. Fortunately, I am friends with Renee, and Renee has been giving me all this great information about what's going on with the uh, stimulus, with the payroll protection plan with all of this stuff. So I want to make sure you guys have as much information as me and her have. Please understand that this stuff is constantly changing on a, whether it be in a day by day basis or an hour by hour basis. So a um, little bit of background about me. I've been an accountant for 19 years. If you don't know me, um, I own a, uh, an accounting firm here in Greenville, South Carolina. And uh, we have about 17 employees here. Uh, Renee has 20 employees at her location in New Jersey. And, uh, you know, so we work real, real well together. But that being said, I love to speak. I love to educate. And why I got so excited about educating people is, and I'll tell you why, is my aha moment. So I realized that accountants don't share the knowledge that they have and people are overpaying in taxes drastically. And guys, I went from being a fractional CFO for 15 different companies, you know, and upwards of five, ten thousand dollars a month from those companies to sharing with everyday people, because I think you can create so much more massive impact if you just help people. Um, help themselves. And so education is key in that. And so what I do is I work alongside people and I help free up money, money that you're already spending, but I teach you how to turn that into business expenses instead of it being living expenses by having a home-based business. Because here's what I know, the average um, person is going in debt about $7,000 a year to work 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year to take two weeks paid vacation. And here's here. Let me break that down for you. 
what didn't what ended up happening and got me really really big time was about two years ago i heard these statistics by grant cardone and i had to go look them up because it got me so bad but it said that the average household income was sixty thousand dollars a year in america and from that you're going to pay fourteen thousand dollars in taxes and so that leaves you with the take home of forty six thousand dollars well the problem with that is that in america the cost of living on average is $53,000. So you see guys where people are going in debt, $7,000 a year to work. And so that was a big eye opener for me. I had been involved in a home-based business and I actually, my accounting practice was ran from home at that point in time. Up until September of this past year, we had 13 employees who were running, working out of our house on top of our six kids being homeschooled. It was super crazy but it worked. And so we knew the tax advantages of having a home-based business, but I knew it stopped me in my tracks that I could help people free up four to $8,000 a year just by attempting to earn income in a home-based business. And it's never been a better time than now when millions of people are out of jobs, when millions of people can't go, go to work because there, there's no work to go to when things are being shut down. Guys, I want you to understand that that before the pandemic, 46% of Americans didn't have an extra $400 to their name. And 66% of Americans didn't have an extra $1,000 to their name. That's why it's so crucial for me to be sharing this information with you today and to help free up that money because I know it's worse now. But the thing is, is my goal and my job is to provide you hope today. Hope that everything's going to get better. They, um, you know, there, there's this stimulus package that's coming up. Everybody has questions about it and concerns. And, you know, do I benefit? Do I not benefit? I'm a contractor. I'm a 1099. I'm, a, I'm in the gig economy. There's just so many questions. So what we wanted to do is just to help provide those answers for you guys and help you understand that, you know, this is really, um, I think this is probably the best stimulus package for as many people as humanly possible in the United States. It, it helps business owners. It's for the self-employed. It's for 1099 subcontractors. It's for employees. Um, probably what it's not is for high income W-2 employees. You're not going to get as much. Um, but I really feel like, you know, throughout, you'll understand a lot of this information. And guys, I am not the expert on this. I have been focused on freeing up money for people so I could get their tax refunds done as fast as humanly possible so that they have some extra money. So I brought on Renee because she knows in more detail. And, you know, I've always learned that if you don't know everything, you bring somebody in who does know it. So um, that being said, we are going to talk about first um, the stimulus benefits for everyone. So this one, I do know this is about, you know, to me, it's more along the lines of taxes. Um, there are cash benefits that are coming to you. It is up in the air on when they're coming. It is up in the air, I think, on um, uh, how they're being delivered. I mean, you know, right now they're saying online that you can go online and you'll be able to put in your information, like you're routing an account number and it will be direct deposited. There are also like I know just just a, lot, a couple of days ago, Social Security, they said if you did did not have to apply for um, you did not have to file a tax return, you still had to file um, in order to get the stimulus. But that has changed now. So like if you receive Social Security, they'll be able to get you a check um, or your direct deposit. So things are changing day by day. We will continue to give you as much information as we possibly can as soon as humanly possible. So with the, um, the stimulus on this, everyone is supposed to receive a $1,200 check. Yeah, and there's some stipulations on it. But if you make less than uh, $75,000, if you're individual, $150,000, if you are married, you are supposed to get $1,200 per adult and $500 for each dependent child. Now, what does a dependent child mean? That means if they're on your tax return. So if they were on your tax return in 2018 or 2019, then you should be getting a stimulus check uh, for them for that much money. The other stipulations is as it can, it phases out once you hit 99,000 for individuals and 198,000 if you are married. So um, in order to qualify, you have to file a tax return or you have to be on social security so that they can link that information to you. 
Renee, is there anything you want to add on this? Because I want to make sure we try to answer as many questions as humanly possible. Um, the only thing is that I know some people who filed in 18 and you haven't filed yet in 19 and you changed your banking, then they're not going to have your new bank account. So hopefully we're trying to figure out if there will be a link that you can change and update your bank account if you haven't filed. Um, so that's the only, you know, thing that they're still, you know, a little gray on and mailing out checks because some people are saying that they're not going to be mailing out checks. So they're going to make you, you know, get a some type of bank account or a debit card to get the money. So that's the only thing I would add. And then the other thing is, I, I think they've talked about if you for some reason you don't get it um, and you file a tax return for 19, let's just say you're late. You didn't file an 18 return. You, you know, were filed late on 19. You uh, what from what I'm hearing, you are allowed to take a credit on your 20 uh 2020 tax return. So, you know, guys, the, these things change constantly. It's funny, and I'm sure Renee is feeling it too. Um, everybody thinks just because I'm an accountant, I'm supposed to know every tax law that there is. I'm supposed to know everything that the president is supposed to come from the president's mouth. And I'm supposed to know it like within 15 minutes, all the tax code around it. So, we're talking about, I think it, I think they issued 880 pages of new stimulus cares act tax law and everything else that went along with it. So please bear with us. We're going to try to give you information and we're going to do it in a format that can free up time for us because there's so many people to help right now. There's so many people that are just lost and we're really trying to, to handle them on a way that, so please, I, I want you to know that, me and Renee are in no way going to try to not talk with you directly, but please understand like we are being bombarded constantly. Our staff is being bombarded. I'm sure you, you, you can say the same thing, Renee, with yes. questions. And it's just over and over and over and over again, the same question. So if we can provide it here and you guys have questions, I want to answer them on the back end when we get finished. I haven't been able to look at anything yet. So the next one is this Family First Cares uh, Response Act. And I'm going to let Renee take this one away because I know she can explain it better than I can. So the Family First Cares Response Act is if you have to be home because you're quarantined for the illness, you were around somebody that was quarantined, um, you're unable to work because your child is school was closed and you cannot work from home. So, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about this. With the states closing things down, they have not allowed that to be covered as of yet. So right now it's for if you're, you know, there's like there's six different reasons and then you will get a it's it's for the employer gets the credit. They will still pay you and then you will get the credit. They'll get their credit. So employers will pay the sick leave for 80 hours and then they will get a, a credit but it has to be one of the qualifying um, conditions. So that that's really the big thing with the, the Family First Cares Response Act. I mean, with all of our clients, not many people have been using this because, you know, if you think about the number of people that this that are affected because, you know, they have it or somebody they know has it, you know, the child care is the big part. And a lot of people have been able to work from home, except, you know, being in the restaurant business, then you obviously, you know, there's a lot of businesses that there's nothing you can do at home. So wonderful. That, uh, yeah, that's the first, you know, that's the short version of it. Awesome. I think everybody would love to have the short version. It's like the cliff notes. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to provide the cliff notes, right? right. Um, okay. So the next next up is the unemployment benefits for all. So, you know, um unemployment benefits are typically not for uh self-employed people, but now we you're actually allowed to receive unemployment as a self-employed person, as a 1099 subcontractor, as a small business. And as far as I have been told is that you just go directly to unemployment and you apply there. So I'm going to let Renee take this one away. So that's exactly, you know, what people are doing. You go and you apply again, because everything is so new and everything's changing and the unemployment people are registering that, you know, how they're going to calculate how much the 1099s and the self-employed employed people are going to get. I, I don't know because they're not reporting to unemployment. So they're going to have to get that information from, 
you know, the federal government as far as what you claimed as of, you know, your previous tax year. But um, you go on to the unemployment, you apply like normal, and the states are, um, because of the extra $600, they're making up for the difference in your unemployment. So New Jersey, the max you can get is $713. So if you're making $1,500, $1,600 a week, normally they're going to give you that extra $600. So they're bringing you up as much whole as they possibly can. The other thing about the unemployment benefits, again, is what as of right now is, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of questions from the employers. Is this going to affect our unemployment rates? As of right now, they're saying it is not going to affect the rates because, you know, it's a pandemic and the, the, a lot of the, the world right now is on unemployment. So they're not holding it against, you know, the companies at this moment. So if you are self-employed and or you are 1099, get on and apply as quickly as possible, because I think the sooner you do it, the quicker you're going to get your money. Wonderful. I love it. I love I like money. So that's <laughs> okay. So uh, here's the big one. <laughs> <laughs> so this one has been like the talk of everybody, and I have just been sending people straight to sba.gov to fill out the paperwork for this loan money, only because you know I it's all up in the air. But if you, from what I understand, and I'll just tell you what I understand is that you can you can go directly to the SBA website. You can apply for a economic injury disaster loan for $10,000, which I did just recently. Super easy. Took 10, 15 minutes. Um, no time. You have to know what your gross income was from uh, January. Uh, it's like February 1st, 2019 to January 31st, 2020. Put that number in. They want to know some cost of goods sold. Uh, if you're a nonprofit, you can also, they had a couple extra questions for that. Um, and you can get that 10 grand. And what, from what I understand, Renee, and Renee has been doing tons of helping with tons of these loans and the SBA, uh, the even bigger loan, loan is that it is free money virtually um, if you're using the money for certain things like payroll, like utilities, rent. So I'm going to let you elaborate on that. So, yeah. So the SBA loan money for this one, the disaster loan, the $10,000 grant, it's to be used. Um, and when we get into the other loan, you know, we'll, we'll do the comparison. But this is the quickest way for people to get money that they're releasing it, you know, quick. The 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 bigger loan, which we'll talk about next, that's going to take a little more time. So like Courtney said, everybody, if you if you need this cash flow, I would absolutely apply for it because it's not going to hurt you with the other loan. You just can't use them. You can't, you know, get you can't double dip. That's all. But um, yeah, I would say go on and do this if you, you know, first, if you need the money within, I think they said it's going to be like within a week. When did you apply, Courtney? I applied on Tuesday or Wednesday. I haven't looked in the bank account today to see if it's there. I'm expecting it anytime. So, right. you know, but the the thing is, guys, I'm just, you know, what we're trying to trying to help people understand is like you've got to use this money. It, the whole purpose of it is to keep your business going. It's not for you to just hang out and chill out and have a good time. It's it's to keep your business going, keep your employees um, you know, working, making sure that you have the lights, that you can turn the lights on when this is all over, that you've got the rent in your pocket. So, you know, I'm I, I'm excited that they're doing this, but I also want people to take it very seriously that they're using this to, to spend on their money. Otherwise, it's just going to be a loan that you're going to end up having to pay back. So, Next up, we've got the um, the payroll protection plan uh, program. And I'm telling you, I've had so many clients ask me questions about this thing. And I it, it's just it blows my mind on, you know, how it all works. And um, Renee did a really good job of explaining this to me yesterday morning and, you know, putting me on the right path and understanding how this all works. So I'm going to let her take this one away because I think they've done over 400, helped over 400 people get loans right now or in the process of getting um, the loans, uh, you know, worked out. And I do want to make sure, and Renee, you can address this. As of yesterday, 
the banks had stopped doing the loans until until they could figure out how to make sure that all the laws were in place, that everybody was benefiting from it and how it all worked. So you can address that as well. So that so, yes, yeah, this is the one that everybody is definitely trying to apply for. And the the lenders right now, you know, they passed the law, but then they haven't really sent all the requirements. So they are trying to get, you know, people the money and understand what that entails. So this is the money that it ha the majority of the money has to be used for payroll. They are only allowing 25 percent of the loan to be used for other expenses like your rent, your interest for your mortgages, utilities, and then any other interest on debts that was acquired prior to February 15th of 2020. So when you're, when you're, again, it's, it's forever changing. We're getting requests from people um, for different dates, different requirements. So I'm just going to tell you my understanding. My understanding is they're going to take last year, 2019, your wages, you're going to divide their, your payroll cost. So your payroll cost is going to be your, your payroll, any employer sponsored health insurance you contribute, any employer money you put towards a retirement plan. So if you have a match for your 401k, um, those expenses, you're going to take that number, divide it by 12, and then multiply it by two and a half times. Now, they're going to ask for backup. So my suggestion is I would overestimate then underestimate. So if there's something you think should be in there as far as payroll costs, I would put it in because the only thing they're going to do would be lower the loan or that part will not be forgiven. It is one loan per business. So you can't go back and re-up it and take another one of these um, loans. So be very careful of what you're asking for. The forgiveness part is going to be for your payroll expenses and then your utilities that you can, you know, you can write off and um, your mortgage payments and also for your, the interest on the mortgage or rent. So, you know, that's the part where they're going to really be checking in more of, and that's going to come later on down the road. So them checking into what they're forgiving, they're going to be definitely more cautious because they want to make sure that when they're given free money it's for what it's supposed to be used for. And the point of this is to get people back to work. They want people to be working. So myself, there were a few employees that were salespeople, not, not a great time to be selling to you know people about how they're doing their payroll. So we did lay those few people off. I am bringing them back in because the money that I'm going to be reimbursed for this loan is going to be from when the loan starts, that going forward eight weeks is what will be forgiven. So the, the amount of money that I've spent on payroll going forward compared to what I've done in the past is how they're going to do the loan forgiveness. So, you know, there's a lot to it, but generally it's last year's payroll and they're asking for like your quarterly tax returns. If you have contractors that could be employees for you, you can include them. A contractor that does your lawn, they are not part of your payroll. You know, that's just a 1099 that you give them. So it's, it's people that would be, could be, you know, working for your company, but you 1099 them because they're, you know, they're independent contractors. So that's been a little gray area too. Again, in my calculations, I tried to get, you know, estimate as things that I thought were in there because I don't, I don't want to fall short that I didn't get enough of the loan. So, and then it's two and a half times all of those numbers. And we have a, a spreadsheet. If anybody wants them at the end, you'll get, you can reach out and I'll send you the spreadsheet that we made. So you can kind of get a calculation of what you are going to get and how much is going to be forgiven. And it's just an estimate because, you know, things are forever changing. Great. Okay. Awesome. Um, somebody had a question. Do you need to document how you use the money? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, how do they figure what is paid back and what isn't? And I, from my understanding, it's payroll, utilities, rent. Those are the things that are going to be forgiven over eight weeks. That is, that's correct. Wonderful. Wonderful. OK. Um, all right. So let's go next. And uh, unfortunately, I just saw that we are uh, we are 
in my more relaxed and less taxing private group. So I've got hundreds of people that aren't seeing this. So when we get done, um, cause I can't share it right now, when we get done, I'm going to share it back into my personal page cause I want everybody to have this information and we'll make sure you get that um, spreadsheet as well. Uh, somebody asked, you know, if they could get a copy of that spreadsheet. The next up is the delay in Social Security taxes, um, which is just the employer portion. So I want you to understand that um, you can delay the Social Security tax payments that you make. You know, typically you have, you know, if you had $100,000 worth of payroll, 6.2% of that you would pay in Social Security wages. That would go to um, the uh, 941 or your, uh, that would go to federal. And so you can actually delay that right now. A hundred percent of, of, of what you, your portion is not your employee portion, not what the employee pays, not the Medicare portion, but it's just the social security. So it's 6.2%. And then of that, you can actually delay it until December 31st of 2021. So you can pay half of what you owe by 2021 you can pay the other half by December 31st, 2022. So is that um, kind of the gist of, of what I understand on that? Yes. The only thing you have to understand in, in all of these scenarios is that you cannot, if you get the, the, the loan, you cannot use this too. So the loan, you use that or you use this. And that's the same with the other one. You cannot use both. If the loan, if you get the forgiveness, if the loan is forgiven, you can't get it. If you get the loan at all, you can't delay your taxes. So just be mindful of that. And even um, the only thing I didn't say with the disaster, you can get both loans, but when they're doing the forgiveness, if you get a $10,000 grant, they're going to take that off of your forgiveness. So if you have $100,000 and that's so how much is going to be forgiven and you got the $10,000, um, the disaster loan, you're going to forgive 90,000. They already gave you the 10. You're not going to get 110,000. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to touch on that. So just be careful when selecting, work with someone, which is best for your business. Is it the loan? Is it the security tax? Or is it the employer retention credit, which we're going to get to next? So, you know, that's what it is. It's This is a deferral. You still owe the money, but you're deferring the taxes for the end till the half to the end of 21 and the other half to 2022. Wonderful. Um, and I did not add in the slide on the retention credit. So let's talk about that um, while we're on this same slide. Okay. So the, the retention credit is, you know, for retaining your employees, you're going to get a 50% credit of the taxes up to $10,000 in wages. So again, it's one or the other. So this is going to be one that you can use or you can use the um, the deferral or you can get the loan. Again, you can't do all three. So it is a credit on the, the taxes up to $10,000 in wages for the employer portion. Wonderful. All right. Awesome. OK. Um, and guys, there's also a couple of things. I just want to bring this up because this is, you know, I know that for some people, this is earth shattering right now. Um, you know, whether you are a W2 employee, whether you are a business owner, whether you are a subcontractor, some people are exploding, their business is exploding. Some people, it's not really changed. Some people are losing everything that they have right now, or at least in fear of that. So I just want to address a couple things like mortgage assistance. You can put your mortgage on hold. You can contact your mortgage lender. You know, right now they're, they're not allowed to charge late fees. It will not affect your uh, credit if you make a late payment. Uh, foreclosures have to stay in place. But please understand that this is not a time to just not pay your pay your payments because you have got to keep making payments or you're going to lose your house eventually. So I just want to be very clear about that. Um, it, but it works with all carriers. So, you know, contact your mortgage company. I'm not a mortgage broker, but I do want to help. And I, I know that's one way that you can get some mortgage assistance. Um, also refinancing. So you could free up some cash. You could refinance your mortgage. I know interest rates are super, super low right now. Um, auto loans, other debts, you know, whatever you can to free up money if that's the situation you need to be in right now. But, you know, my biggest thing for people is helping them understand that 
if you did lose your job today or yesterday or two weeks ago, most people don't realize how much money they're truly paying in taxes and what that effect on their family life is. So I want to give you a scenario um, just because I had this happen to me uh, last year. I had someone came to my office. The husband made 85000 a year. The wife made 55000 a year. They were both W-2 employees. They'd gotten a $35,000 a year pay increase and wanted to know how much money they were going to end up having out of the $35,000. And we determined that the increase was only $13,000. They were going to go, um, it, it was literally going to cost them $22,000 in taxes to work, to get that money. So that really was a hard hit for me. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. People don't realize they're actually going further back um, if they continue to make more money, if they're a W-2 employee. So I said, you know, what if one of you stayed at home? And so we took the 85000 a year. We did away with the $55,000 a year. And we determined that if she, the the wife, she made 55000 she was only bringing home $18,000 a year, or excuse me, $21,000 a year, which was $1,800 a month out of the $55,000 a year paycheck because they were both going into a higher tax bracket because she was working. And so what we determined is that if she could just make $1,000 a month, staying at home, working from home, you know, whether I don't care if it's network marketing, I don't care if it's a home-based business, I don't care what you do, just something you're passionate about that you can open your eyes, open your mouth, share with people that you can do, then she would be better off making that thousand dollars than she would having a $55,000 a year paycheck. Because see guys, you don't realize the tax benefits of being a home-based business owner. So you can literally, I could take that thousand bucks and I would turn that into a loss on paper because now you can redirect your living expenses. You can turn those into business expenses. So one of the best ways to free up cash is to find a home-based business find something you're passionate about, something you can share with people. Now you can start redirecting your living expenses, turning those into business expenses. You're going to save between four and seven, four and $8,000 a year in tax savings. That's immediate money that you can free up. So if your spouse worked, then you could increase your, your deductions on your W-4. So I just want to make sure, make it very clear to people I want to provide hope today that if you are in a place that you are freaking out, that you've lost your job, you don't know what to do, then a home-based business may be a good place for you. And so the amount of money that you would need to make outside as opposed to working from home is completely different. So um, I just want to share that. So now uh, freeing up some more money here. I love freeing up money. Um, if you haven't figured that out yet. So next up. Uh, the one-time draw from 401k or IRA. I'll talk about that just uh, just for a little bit. I do not believe in 401ks. I do not believe in 403bs. I do not believe in these things. So um, this may be a good time to take money out. Um, I'm not telling you not to put money into retirement. You definitely should. I just believe there's other ways to do it. So you can take up to $100,000 without the 10% penalty. So if you're looking at taking money out right now, um, understand you're going to have to pay taxes on that money, but they're actually allowing you three years to pay back the taxes. And right now you don't have to take required minimum distribution. So if you're over the age of 70 and a half, you're not, you don't have to actually take those required minimum distributions right now. So you can use the funds to pay into um, an uh, overfunded um, whole life policy. You can invest it where you, where you want to invest it for, um, reasonable dividends through and make other tax advantages. But, you know, this just allows you to take some money out without having to get hit with that 10% penalty. And, and a, you know, and to, to streamline a couple years, you can pay the taxes instead of doing it right now. One of another big thing um, is net operating losses. So this went away in 2018, January 1st, 2018, they took away the net operating losses. You can no longer take carry backwards. Um, a loss. So the great thing about if 2020, you happen to have a loss for 2020, you can actually now go back and carry that backwards five years against any income that you have. So you could potentially come back and get an, an amend your tax return 
go backwards, amend the return, get the money back so you can utilize that money now instead of um, waiting to carry those losses forward. So it was that we could we could carry them forward indefinitely. That was the new law that came out January 1st, 2018. Now you can go backwards five years. You can amend those returns and get your money back. So that may be a good uh, benefit for you guys as well. And then um, the next, I, I just want to be very clear. I, and I can send you my deduction spreadsheet on this as well. But please make sure you're taking advantage of the tax deductions that you're entitled to take. Don't allow someone to tell you that you can't take certain deductions, that it could it could trigger a red flag. Like this is, just don't. Take the deductions that you're entitled to take. If you're attempting to earn an income, you should be writing off deductions. I uh, am first and foremost, I will tell you that one of the things that I see that makes me sick every single day is just not writing off cell phone, internet, not writing off business use of your home, not writing off legal and professional fees, car and truck expenses, not taking as much of those. Meals is, is definitely a huge deduction if you're attempting to earn an income while you're going out to eat. So there's lots of things that you're entitled to take and you should be taking advantage of those deductions. The next, up, next step in that is to make sure that you're paying um, and, you know, Renee's the payroll person. So, you know, I'm, I'm connecting with her, with my clients and saying, hey, look, you need to be um, paying 20% of your net income in a paycheck if you have an S corporation. So I see people overpay every day and it makes me sick on how much money they're overpaying in self-employment taxes. Right now is not the time to overpay in taxes. Right now is the time to take the um, tax deductions you're entitled to, to structure your business the way it should be structured and to move forward so that we can all get through this together. So um, the last thing... I, I'm super excited about, and we're going to answer some questions, but you know, one of the things I want you to understand guys and what I'm very passionate about is giving back. And why I bring this up is because there are going to be a ton of nonprofits that are going to get hit really hard because of everything that's going on. And they have a, a purpose and a passion and they need to provide support for the people that they're already working with. And so, you know, we combined our passion and our profits about two years ago as April 16th, two years ago, we've been able to feed 1.76 million servings of food to children in need through a nonprofit called Mana Relief. We also provide, um, we, we work with Operation Underground Railroad and we free children. And we're committed to doing that. And the way that we give, it becomes 100% tax deductible for our business. So, I'll, and the reason, that's why I'm bringing this up. If you love to give, um, this is not the time to stop giving. This is the time to continue giving. But I want you to be smart about it. If you give from a gross income level of your business instead of a net income, you can actually write off a hundred percent of your giving as a as a cost of goods sold item for your business. So it has to become part of your business model. But we've been able to do that for every dollar that comes in. We feed a serving of whole food, plant based nutrition to children in need. And then uh, the other thing that we do is for every twenty five thousand dollars that we bring in, we free a child through sex trafficking. So not only is it combining our passion, our profits, it's a massive tax deduction for us. It works exactly the same way as Tom Shoes, as Warby Parker, but it's truly a buy one, give one model. And if you create that model of giving, then you can write it off as a business deduction as well. Instead of it, you 96% of Americans don't get benefit from giving. So, you know, I've always been told if you help enough people get exactly what they want, you will automatically get what you want. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And so that's why we're going to give away some stuff here. So, you know, we give away a lot of our time. Um, I'm so grateful for Renee and uh, we'll answer questions right after this, but I'm so grateful for Renee. She has helped take some of this load off of me dealing with clients and helping them understand these situations, um, you know, up until right now, up until May 15th. And you guys, if you're in my membership, it's only 49 bucks. So, but you are welcome to share this with anyone. They can get a tax strategy session with me instead of spending the 149 that it costs out. If you're not our client, 
um, it, we're dropping that to $99. So you can go there and schedule a, a tax strategy session. We'll be happy to help you see if we can find you some money and help, um, help, help you in that regard. But the other thing is just to uh, get a copy of my free book. Uh, it's, it's free right now. Um, you can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it directly on this uh, website as well. Um, I'm only charging uh, shipping if you decide you want to buy the book, but the download is free. So uh, go there and, and check that out. But if you will just right now, take a picture of the screen, text tax to this number, you're going to get not only this same information, the uh, tax strategy session, the book that you can download, but you'll also get a text. Um, you'll also get the contact information for Renee and how to reach out to her. And so Renee, um, you know, with that, I want you to give them, I know on your website, you've got a lot of information. So just tell them a little bit about that. So um, on our website, you know, we started a um, coronavirus relief page, so you can get onto that link. And as we are updating it and we're constantly updating it. Every time something new comes out from, you know, we have a lot of HR companies we work with, you know, we're subscribed to like Bloomberg. So when they come out, we update our, our page on um, it's paydaypr.com and just subscribe. And as we're updating it, you can, you'll get the information because this is changing constantly. You know, it was, you know, even the loan, it was, you know, 10 years now it's down to two years and, you know, the interest rates have changed on it. So, they're they're just changing it because we're there's so much going on in the world right now. So you know we have all that on our web page, and you know we do really from hire to fire. We can help you with as a payroll company. So and we can help you through you know trying to understand like what requirements are going to be for this loan. The best that we see what it is as of right now. So yes, and I love and here's the thing, guys. I want to tell you uh, just straight up. Um, you know, payroll is not my forte. That's why we sent it off to Renee. And times like this, you need a payroll company. I can assure you, um, you know, not only do payroll companies handle, you know, making sure that new hire paperwork's done, making sure that you are, um, that you've done what you're supposed to do. They, they make sure your payroll tax returns are done. Your payroll taxes are filed, you know, so they do such a crucial job and it's a huge liability on them. Um, and a huge undertaking for those of you, most of you don't even realize that, but you know, they're dealing with so much right now. And I'm so grateful to you, Renee, to um, help our, help our, uh, not only our membership group here, but also to help the, our clients to help the rest of the world get this information. Because, you know, if I don't have experts to rely on in this field and, and what you guys are doing, it's very hard for me to be a good tax strategist, to be a good payroll strategist, to be a good loan officer, I guess is, is what some people think I am today. And I mean, somebody told me the other day, they literally sent me a message on Facebook and they're like, um, I think you're supposed to know everything. And I'm like, but I don't. I know about taxes. That's what you hired me for. Like, I don't know everything about everything. I can give you my advice. I can tell you. Well, I've been through a lot. I've, I've lost everything a couple of times. I've been through bankruptcy, you know, six years ago, seven years ago. I mean, I have, I can tell you from experience, but this is something we haven't ever experienced before. So if anybody has any questions, I want to make sure we answer them. Um, I should have said separate documentation. I know I need documents for tracking. Um, so the documentation that they need for the bank, can you go so what, into detail on that? So what we're saying is that they want the last year's records of your payroll. So, you know, some people are running it from 1-1 to 1231. Some banks are requesting it, you know, to split the year. So they're doing it as of like yesterday's date and backwards 12 months. So you'll need payroll records of employees that you paid listed their year to date and anyone over a hundred thousand dollars they, you can include up to a hundred thousand dollars of someone's income over that. It's you just, it won't be forgiven. Um, they're going to need your like what you actually pay for your benefits. So your employer portion of your benefits, they're going to receive the same thing with your, your retirement plans. And they're asking for copies of corporate, your tax returns, your 941s, your state and your, um, 
your unemployment returns. So that is right now what all of our clients are asking for. So we have been crazy busy with getting all that information. Some of them are asking it broken down for the, by the month. And we're, you know, we had a report written to supply that. I just want to touch on something that Courtney said, like, it's not, sometimes we know, but you know, like for us, we have a software company. So there's things that like, as things change, like things have to be implemented in the world. So, and that's what the banks are dealing with. Like if you're doing the, the um, family, the first family cares act relief, there's special coding for that, that has to be done in a payroll software. So things are just taking time. And, you know, the one thing that a lot of us have right now is, well, some of us at least have some extra time. So this is a great time to work on your business. Things that I found through this is that with some of the law changes, people who did not have employee handbooks, they didn't know how to handle this, the, the Family First Care Act, because they didn't have clear definitions of what their PTO policy looked like. So I would advise you to make sure that, you know, when since you have more time, especially nights and weekends, to look into your business and make sure that going forward, you do have clear definitions of, you know, working from home, you know, things like that, that if it ever comes up again, you're going to be prepared. So. Mm -hmm. And the other thing somebody asked, um, is there a percentage? Could they use, uh, could they buy product? Could they buy like cost of goods sold with the $10,000 loan and that be forgiven? I don't think so, right? Well, I know that the $10,000, it cannot be used for the same thing of the PPL. So, because um, they don't want you to use it, like I'm saying I'm using it for payroll, then you're like, well, I'm using it for payroll. So it is for additional um, resources for the disaster loan. So yeah. I don't know about the product, but. Got it. Okay. And what if someone is a 1099 subcontractor or they own their own business and they're the only ones on payroll, would they qualify potentially for either of those loans? So they, they would qualify for either. They would. Yes. You just have to decide, is it enough? Because really the loan is to get people back to work. So it's very beneficial to people who have a higher payroll cost. So, um, you know, I was working, we work with a lot of small businesses and, you know, when they were doing it, their expenses were higher than their payroll cost. So, you know, they would really just be paying themselves. So yes, you can apply. I believe the, they have not opened it up for the 1099 people yet, or the it open up for people who are actually like have businesses at this moment. So, but not the 1099 or um, the self-employed people. I feel, I think next week they're going to open it up for them. So it looks like to me, if you've lost your business, go file unemployment. Okay. Right. If or if you've lost your job, go file unemployment. Uh, it also, if you've lost your business, you could potentially get the ten thousand dollars loan, which is a grant. Pretty much, you don't have to pay that back as long as you're using it to help help boost your business. Um, and then the next step is that you could potentially get the SBA loan, but only the real purpose of that SBA loan is if you had had payroll, potential payroll, like for me. I mean, I have $10,000 a week in payroll. I have, you know, $5,000 a month in rent and utilities for my, you know, 4,000 square foot office and everything in it. So that that would be a benefit for, for someone like me, you know, to maybe potentially get is two and a half times your uh, payroll. Is that how much it is? So so two and a half times payroll. your payroll, right, for the month. Exactly. So if I had forty thousand dollars a month in payroll, potentially fifty. So let's say it was fifty times two and a half. That would be a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars that I could potentially get. And as long as I use that money for payroll, if I use that money for rent or utilities, um, then it would be forgiven for the first eight weeks, right? The first the eight weeks of payroll. So and you would have to prove that you're going to have to provide documentation. Your payroll can't go under 25 percent of the of the um, how it got started. So if I if I had ten thousand dollars a week in payroll and I dropped to five thousand dollars a week in payroll, I would only really get the five thousand. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. So they're looking at it of what you're paying from the eight weeks from when you get the loan forward. So because, again, they want people to go back to work and the money, you know, cannot only 25 percent of it can be used for anything that's not payroll related. So for your utilities, your um, your income, I mean, your percentage of interest 
and your rent. So, you know, if you have $10,000 in, in payroll and you have $8,000 in mortgage, you're not, you only can write off $2,500 of your miscellaneous income. I mean, your miscellaneous expenses. So. And, and so there's a question is, can the $10,000 be used for new hires? We were just getting ready to hire when the virus hit. Uh, I, that I'm not sure of. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I can get back to you. So if you want to email me, I will, I will research that and see. See, it's like, we don't know everything guys. There's, there's so much, there's just yeah. so much. To, and to there's, a, know. there's a lot of variables because some people, you know, truly late, you know, myself is an example. Like some people truly got late, like were not working as of the end of last year to being in this year and it had nothing to do with the virus. So there was a, a lapse in my, in, you know, my wages for a few months. So there is going to be a lot of variables and they're seasonal employers and their calculation is calculated different. So some of it you may just have to prove and that's what it's going to be. But a lot of it is it's just a self-certification. Like when I'm reading about it, they're saying they're approving people for this loan. So the research and getting the loan is not going to be that much. It's going to be the forgiveness is when if you're if you're trying to forgive things that are not acceptable and you're doing it in a fraudulent way, then there's going to be like penalties and fines. And but if you're just putting something in there that's not, it just won't be forgiven. So right. And I, I don't know if you even know this question. I don't deal with any oil fields at all, but someone was saying that oil fields are not included in the stimulus. Any idea? Um, there is a stipulation, but I don't, I don't know. I know it's, I mean, I've read like under 500 and then because even nonprofits and so, but if they want to reach out to me, I will look into it to see. Awesome. And guys, I, I am. I apologize so much for not putting on this uh, on my actual page. I, you know, and I know that uh, with everything going on, I have not been in the membership site as much as possible. I, every day, I've been creating content and just putting it on a personal page because I really want to provide this information free for people because they need this help right now. So I appreciate you so much for being inside this membership group. I appreciate you being a part of this. I want to give you as much, much information as possible. But right now I'm just trying to give and give and give. So I appreciate you guys for being here. I appreciate you being a part of what we're doing. I promise you when this is all over, we're going to have some amazing talk about lots of other things that can save money. But man, there are some crazy times coming today. And, you know, as much as I'm not necessarily scared of the virus, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm very healthy. I take immune support every single day. I have made all of our employees take all the immune support, um, you know, to make sure that they're healthy, that we get through manner relief. But, you know, I, I know that for businesses, this is going to be a really hard time only because nobody knows how long it's going to be like, that's the problem. It's like, is it going to be two weeks? Is it going to be a month? Is it going to be two months? Is it going to be three months? Nobody knows. So we're going to keep providing content. Like we'll be like our own little news channel. We'll be like <laughs> news media right here. And, uh, and I'll get some more experts involved. If I don't know it, I will make sure we find out. And uh, I appreciate you guys for everything. I will be posting this as a, a YouTube you can share it with anybody you want. It'll be on my personal page and anybody you have tried to share this with earlier. Um, I do apologize. I just clicked the wrong button. Um, I, we can clearly see that I'm not the best when it comes to technology. I was screaming at my husband. I'm like, make the sound come on. And he was at the house and I'm like, why doesn't it work? And he's like, I don't know. So anyway, so I appreciate you, Renee. You being oh, thank here. you for having me. It was great. It was nice. Yeah. It was, hopefully you guys got a lot of great information. Yes. And is there any last words you want to say? Anything you want to answer because they people are asking you 10,000 times for? <laughs> no, I mean, it's really you're going to each lender, I think, is going to vary a little bit. So just check with your lender. And, you know, I would get it in as soon as possible because I think yesterday they said it was like three billion, you know, dollars. They've already like they're already trying to approve. So you know, there is a, a lot of businesses. And like Courtney said, I'm the same. I'm not afraid I'm going to get the virus. I'm afraid of what this is going to do to the small businesses, the large businesses and the economy. I mean, it's really, 
you know, people are afraid, like businesses are closing. I mean, we deal with a lot of small businesses and it's, it's sad and we're helping in any way we can to get this loan expedited. So I would just say a lot of banks are only dealing with their own customer. So get to your bank and get this loan, because even if you get it and you don't need it, then you, you pay it back. And the interest rate is so low. It's, 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 it's almost, uh, you should just, you should try to get it either, right. either the, the disaster one or the, the, the payroll protection loan. Wonderful. And uh, you can, uh, as well, go to her website. You can text this number. I'll put it up one more time um, so you guys can take a picture. You can send that. We're not going to try to sell you anything today. That's not where we're at. Um, you can text this number. You, that will send you um, directly her information, her email address. But you can also go to paydaypr.com. And she has a ton of content. Like very at the very top, you can actually see uh, where you can click to uh, apply apply for the, the loan as well. So they've got a lot of resources. Go there, check that out. Um, you know, if I can help at all, please let me know. Please understand at this time, both of us are being bombarded, you know, 18, 20 hours a day. People are texting me at 12 o'clock in the morning asking questions that I don't necessarily know that I've got to go look up for them to help them. So please understand our customer service. We're trying um, and we're going to try to get back to you as soon as possible. But do not expect that if you text me, message me, Facebook message me, email me, that I'm going to get back to you in five minutes because everybody else expects the same thing. So, guys, I love you. I hope you have an amazing day. Happy Saturday and talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Sharing. We're going to end the broadcast.